But I'm not even sure if we have a stunt person standing by. And then also, where are you going to find a six feet tall Chinese guy? Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to We're Gonna Need a Bigger Show. Today is very exciting for us. Uh, on the show this evening, we have Robin Chu, who was in uh, Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Uh, this is part of our uh, Mortal Kombat retrospective, so we're, we're very happy to have him. Uh, Robin, welcome to welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. I love uh, the title of your show. I think that's one of the reasons that prompted me to, to be on it. I mean, it's almost like we need a bigger show now. How big can your show be? As, yeah, as big so, as as big as we can. Uh, yeah, you're, you're you're helping us get there, so we yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> now we're we're big Jaws fans, so that was like that was our you know our our. Hook. We were like, man, Jaws. What can we do for our show? Bigger show. That makes perfect sense. So, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, I guess you know, we'll just jump right into it. Um, I guess first and foremost, how did you kind of get into acting? I mean, what where where did that come from? Oh God, um, I I was in school. I was majoring in civil engineering. Okay. And, and then after I finished, I I was working, um, and I got really really bored. <laughs> and my brothers, yeah, I got, I mean, go yeah, wide, right? Uh, and I've always been like um, a very sort of active person, uh, even, you know, my childhood. I, I'd practice martial arts and all that. So for me to be in an office and just have a regular job, it just wasn't me. Um, so my brother's girlfriend was running for Miss Hong Kong at that time. That was okay. like 1986. And then he says, Come on over, Robin, if you're bored. You know, I can introduce you to a lot of pretty girls. <laughs> and of course, you know, how can you say no to that? So I went to Hong Kong and I met some people in the industry and they asked me if I was interested in being in a movie. And, and that's basically how I started. Um, uh, it was an a action movie and I didn't have any lines at all. I played a, a KGB assassin. And so all I had to do with just action. And that was actually my first stunt work also and, and sort of exposed me to the whole whole. Hong Kong action cinema. So. Sure. Uh, well, I, I that intrigues me because I'm I, I like martial arts movies. I mean, I'm not like a yeah. buff on them or anything, but I've seen my fair share for sure. So, what do you think are the differences between making movies in Hong Kong and making them in Los Angeles? Um, I, I think in Hong Kong is very spontaneous. You know, because we go on set and we actually literally choreograph the entire scene. Sure. That moment. Wow. Versus in the States where you need to rehearse, you need to show it to producers and, and directors and, and the studio. And then so by the time you show to all these executives, you're kind of tired of the fight sequence. So <laughs> there's nothing really exciting about like choreographing um, stuff in the States. It's more exciting in Hong Kong because you really try to do stuff that has never been done before. And of course, you know, I mean, there's, there's um, because it's never rehearsed, so there's... It takes a little longer time, but then I think the actors in Hong Kong are so craft to work in under under those conditions that uh, they basically can jump in and, and do the stuff. Right. So that's what's exciting about the Hong Kong cinema is that you know everything is very spontaneous. Um, I'm just nothing is rehearsed. You know when, right. you're, when you know what they say when it's, it's better if you be spontaneous than you sort of prep. I mean you can never prep well enough to do something good anyway. Sure. Yeah. Are are there any of those um, Hong Kong movies like the like Shaw Brothers or any of that kind of stuff that when you saw it you were like I I want to do that. Oh God! I mean, I grew up in the '70s, so that's totally like you know. I mean, that's like the Shaw Brothers, the biggest like you know. We're the world cinema, sure, action films. You know, like especially those Shaw Brothers movies, like the Five Venom, Deadly Venom, the One Arm Swordsman. You know, <laughs> I mean, those are. I mean, if you think about it, it might be a little kind of hokey and kind of stupid. One Arm Swordsman, right? <laughs> uh, but then you know, I mean, they're being very you know creative about. The genre, you know, it's, I mean, they don't want instead of just doing plain martial arts, they come up with stuff, and even the one armed swordsman, it makes sense. Sure, <laughs> you know, I mean, so I mean, I mean, I think the state's trying to do the blind swordsman with Rutgert Howard. Uh, there's a movie, action movie, where he plays a blind guy, and he plays Dr. Ichi, and and somehow it doesn't come across. Right, mm. it looks kind of stupid, a blind right. guy, fight. <laughs> but then Dr. Ichi does it cool. So, right, yeah. So yeah, so I guess um, yeah, of course, uh, all the Shaw Brothers pretty much my uh, my big influence in me in, in getting into like martial arts and all that. Right. Gotcha. 
Uh, so, how long were you acting and performing in in Hong Kong before you made the move here? Um, I was there for eight years. Okay, I did about thirty five movies in Hong Kong. Uh, I started off as a stunt person, and then sort of made myself like you know a uh, bit more known and and got more lines and like from a, a low bodyguard to like a sidekick, a sidekick to a villain, and then a villain starts slowly trans- transitioning into playing good guys. So I was in Hong Kong for about eight and a half years before I came back to do Mortal Kombat. Sure. Okay. Uh, that was one of the things that was interesting when, uh, you know, we were kind of doing our research was that initially you weren't, you thought that you might be offered a villain role for, for Mortal Kombat. And- um, well, uh, no, no, no. I, I mean, I had, I had, again... Yeah. I had to cast, I had to read seven times to get the part. Wow. I think they probably called every Asian actors in America, <laughs> sure. Europe, to, to read for the role. And I, I read seven times. And uh, I, was, I didn't get offered um, the villain role right away. But I, what happened is that I didn't want to go in for the audition, honestly, because Mortal Kombat, that, you know, come on. I mean, that's <laughs> another ninja movies. You sure. know, like, like, do we need another ninja movies? Like, you know, um, so then uh, I told my agent, um, said, that's kind of stupid, you know, I mean, Mortal Kombat, what is that? I said, it's the biggest video game. Well, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't play video games. I just, <laughs> I just got here from Hong Kong, so you don't know me. I don't know anything about Mortal Kombat. So I went in and I met the casting directors and directors um, and the producers and, 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 and they asked me what I, what I do. And I said, well, I do a style called Wushu and, and Kenpo Karate and all that. And then he pointed, uh, picked a wall and with actors, and yeah, 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 that's another guy who does wushu. And then I said, no, 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 that guy does karate. I do wushu. <laughs> Can't tell him the difference. Sure. So, um, so uh, no, I, I, I was pretty much offered uh, Liu Kang right away, uh, not the villain role. Yeah, right. Kira Tagawa was awesome as a villain anyway. So sure, sure. yeah. <laughs> I, from the outset, were they like, okay, this character has this kind of fighting tradition and he needs to fight in a wushu style or was that kind of discussed later on um no no we had we had uh, our stunt coordinator was uh, pat johnson he did all the karate kid movie um i think in more combat they want to bring a variety of different styles and i think you know i mean it's they've seen pretty much everything there is to see in in the states meaning like you know i mean, I mean you, you got Pat Johnson. He did Karate Kid. I mean, what more can you get? Um, so for me, coming from Hong Kong kind of brings in a different sort of style, a different rhythm. So when they saw my fighting style, you know, it, it's, it has a, a different sort of beat, you know, versus one, two, one, two. You know, it's like one, two, that, you know, like fast and slow. And so they were really interested in saying, like, you know, Robin, I think we want to go with that. Sure. And then, so then, that's pretty much how it went for for my style. Is that they liked what they saw, and and I just went with it. Um, Great. Cool. Uh, well, Cam and I we're both filmmakers, and so the the process is very interesting to both of us. Uh, just can you talk a little bit about you know what the I mean what the production was like? I mean, it seemed there's so much going on. I mean, just the you know the mythology behind the series there's you know it's it's obviously very dense and there's a lot happening i mean it seems like it, it was probably a pretty tight production i mean was that the case um you know what i i didn't think so it was okay. actually relaxed actually um uh, we had uh, paul anderson you know that was his mm-hmm. first big hollywood movie um he was really excited about it and he's like a kid in a candy store i mean he was only like 29 years old I think back then mm. um, so he was having a blast we were we all were because this that was our first big American opportunity um, so it wasn't really a tight lip I mean we were happy to show our stuff sure you know so uh, we were excited to go to work every day um, um, and I think uh, the producers uh, and everyone was really behind us uh, gave us a lot of uh, breathing room and let us do whatever we want um, so it, it wasn't really like, not like Star Wars, you know, it wasn't like tight right. lock set or, or, or anything like that. We had visitor coming in and out, you know, because everyone heard about Mortal Kombat, the movie. Sure. You know, sure. So everyone was really excited. So we had a lot of visitor. I mean, Midway, uh, the developer came in and, and, and watched us work. And then of course the CG company, um, just a lot of the music company, uh, we had like distributors coming in. Um, so, um, no, it wasn't tight lip at all. It was very relaxed and casual. Great. Um, I wonder if you could talk about our, our 
producer who you, who you spoke with, Ashley, she uh, she's very into you know stunts and, and things like that. We know that you you got a lot to do a lot of your own stunt work. Right. Um, were you responsible for all your own stunt work? And uh, yes. I want. I was also wondering if you could talk a little bit about the hard days. Like, what were some of the hardest things that you had to um, do? Well, you know, I mean, yes, because, like, you know, uh, first of all, they're not used to seeing actors doing their stuff. Right. Like, you know, falling or, or do even a shoulder roll, a little jump. <laughs> sure. You know, like, it's, it's a little jump. <laughs> so, so, so I just went ahead and did it. And, and they said, okay, all right. So I think it's not until um, we went back to do – I'm not sure if you guys know that we did a, a reshoot. Like mm-hmm. We had – additional fight sequences that, you know, that we added. Um, that was the reptile scene and the scorpion fight scene. Oh, okay. um, So I choreographed both scenes. And I think, um, and, and I, I put a lot of time into it. And I think my fight, during my fight with the reptile scene, where reptile threw me against some shelvings. Um, and I mean, that was me. So then uh, I did that. And also he threw me again and I landed like on the edge of the pillar. Um, right there I fractured two ribs. Oh, wow. uh, well, that because I, I did it um, 10 times. Oh, okay. I expected that I would be doing 10 times. Sure. So by the 10th time, I was a little tired. So then I kind of landed wrong and I landed on the edge of the pillar. And Paul Anderson, whoa, that looked great. Said, well, yeah, it, it was real. <laughs> <laughs> did, was there even a, a stunt guy like... On on staff for you, or were you just from the beginning like, no, I'm going to do the whole thing? Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, I I knew what we were doing. So then, um, you know, the stunts is not that outrageous. I mean, I did a lot of outrageous stuff in Hong Kong. I jumped up buildings and, and got run over by cars and all that stuff. Um, so then, for me to like, you know, landing on my back or get kicked and you know, it's it's nothing. So then we we have a stunt. Per- I'm not even sure. If we have a stunt person standing by, okay. uh, but then I, I didn't use one at all. So, uh, and then also, where are you going to find a six feet tall Chinese guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Sure. <laughs> um, was there any particular fight in that first movie that um, maybe you know, looking at it? I mean, it's been twenty years. That was part of the reason why we wanted to get in touch with you is that we're hitting a, an anniversary. So, are there any of the fights? Either that you choreographed or that you were in that you're really proud of. That um, really I think came the out. scorpion and reptile fights are pretty cool. I mean, I think without those scenes, I mean, I think all right. So what happens is that they we finished the movie and then New Line saw it and then go, well, something is missing. We need more fights. Right. Well, that's what I've been telling them. We need more fights. So mm-hmm. then that's why they went back and and I think I'm not sure how much they put in uh, for those two additional fights, um, but we went back and sort of um, gave me full control of the fight sequence. Um, Paul, Larry Kazanov was really cool. And, and, you know, say, whatever Robin wants, Robin gets. Just, just assist him. And Paul Anderson was super cool. Um, so, I mean, those two fight, um, if you look at it now, it's still whole. Yeah, so, yeah. I was just... Like, I was... We have the twist, we have the flip, we have the ratchet pull, we have going through walls, we have the swing on the pole. I mean, if you look at today... Um, aside from different filming style, like with different angles and different cuts, the techniques are there. And, it's, sure. and that's 20 years ago. So if you look at today's, like um, the Avenger movies or any Marvel movies, I mean, it's, it's the same stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's, what can I say? I mean, it's the same thing with Star Wars, you know, like, right. like you know, it's, I don't know, 30 years from ago. Star Wars uh, when Star Wars first came out and you look at sci-fi movies and it still doesn't look like Star Wars right. <laughs> you know so uh, so I'm pretty proud of uh, what we did uh, on the first model uh, I think it's still the fight sequence is still holds today well the the great thing is you know I mean it 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 was really successful you know I mean the movie the movie saw great success and you know I mean there's there is a glut of of uh, video game adaptations but I think Mortal Kombat, you know, that the first Mortal Kombat movie stands heads, heads and ta- tails oh. above the rest. I mean, it is... It, no doubt. I, I agree with you. Um, I, I mean, even, um, I, think, I think several people approached me because it is the 20th anniversary of Mortal Kombat. And, and, um, and I think one of the reasons why, you know, why it's still sort of this sort of... We're, we're actually recycling audiences. Um, the younger people, younger kids are watching Mortal Kombat now. Sure. It's because it's a simple story. You know, uh, it has cool music, cool fights, and that's it. Sure. What more do you need? <laughs> right. <laughs> for for the uh, the scorpion fight in the first one, um, 
I was I was curious. Johnny Cage gets I mean he gets peed up pretty good. In oh, that one. Yeah. So yeah. what was he kind of giving you crap about that? Like no, Robin, no, no, come no, on. Well, no, I mean Lyndon Ashby is a really super cool guy. We're still friends, but uh, by the That's way, Clarkson and I are still friends, and we still see each other. Um, and I told Lyndon, Lyndon, you know, I mean, you gotta get beat up because <laughs> in that way, when you come back, you'll be even bigger of a hero. You know, right, like, yeah. you gotta get your ass kicked really, really <laughs> bad. Now, if you notice, like, I mean, he got hit for real. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple shots you can't, you can't, you can't fake those, fake those hits. I said, Lyndon, just, just, just take it. You're gonna look amazing. He said, Robin, I'm getting my ass kicked. He said, that's okay because you're gonna win at the end. Yeah, <laughs> that's so, great. No, so then, so then, yeah, it was really hard. Um, uh, but again, because we're we're really good friends and and we 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 were just having fun. So um, he was okay with it, and he would say, fine, okay, let's do it, let's do it. Yeah. Sure. Uh, well, kind of moving from from the first movie into the second movie, um, I mean, there definitely seems to be a changing of the guard. I mean, there weren't a lot of returning people, and the, you know, there weren't a lot of returning elements. And I mean, it just seems to- even even the tone. It just seems like a really uh, different movie. Almost, uh, it seems like a very full movie. Like there is just so much in it. Right. Um, I don't know. I mean, when you first got the script, kind of, what were your impressions? And, well, and I mean, of course, all our intention was to make a good movie. Sure. The first movie. Um, it was from the script. It's fine. You know, it's just that I think what it was that, you know, because it was a bigger budget. I think we had twice as much money. Wow. You know, when you have twice as much money, you're going to try to spend it. Sure. Yeah. So in order to spend it, you gotta fill in stuff. You gotta right. you know, this, you got a bigger set, you got and then all of a sudden I mean I feel they were trying to do too much also. You know, they were trying to uh um, to give the audience what they want. So they trying to introduce a lot of new characters, uh and then they appear like a few seconds and they die. And then that's a very disappointing thing for, sure. for the fan. Um I think they were just trying to do too much. They were overly ambitious. But all the fights we we had about three months to prep the fight. And honestly, we didn't get to shoot a lot of our, our, our stuff just because we were so short in, of time. Because everything was bigger than the first one. So all the, all the scene it takes longer time. That means we need longer time to do the fights. And, but then, of course, the fights always suffer um, at the end. Is that we always run out of time for the fights. So uh, I think that's one of a sort of failure you know it's just that you know we forgot about you know the original idea of making Mortal Kombat sure. it's, too, like, it's about the fight right. the story, it's about the combat it's about right. the combat sure mm-hmm. the story is important but then we got the story we understand we saw the first movie we got it right you know uh, Shao Kahn invaded us again so then we need to <laughs> beat him so right. just, yeah. that's it right mm-hmm. uh, I think that was uh, we were pretty overly ambitious I think uh, and that's why uh, it has a different tone you know, again, so uh, the best thing is really to stay simple. Sure. Is it, So that being said, I mean, I'm sure this isn't the first time you've tried to, you know, you've talked about that movie in a way and kind of thinking about, well, what could we have done better? So when watching it, you know, in any time since then, has there ever been a moment where you were like, okay, that was good in, an, in the second one? Um, you know, I think all of it is like almost good. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know, I mean, it hasn't. I don't. I don't have a that's that was good moment. I mean, right. I think every moment was almost there, right. and we're not quite there. You know, which is kind of sad because then, um, because again, coming from Hong Kong, everything like I said, everything was very spontaneous. We do the stuff, we do the work, sure. we go in and do the work. But again, this is a, a studio, kind of studio, independent, New Line. Um, that we have uh, limitations, like we can't go over time, we can't go over budget. I mean, that's that's it. Right. In Hong Kong, everything goes. You know, we 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 know what we want, and we're going to go in and get it. Sure. But in, in in the state, is that you know we run out of time, we can't do it. We, that's it. We're going to end. We're going to stop. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, I was hoping that we would go back and do some reshoot, but we never did. So there mm-hmm. were there weren't reshoots like the first no, movie no, then. No, wow, that's no. that's. That's upset. Yeah, that, that, I, I I don't know what happened. So I mean, I, I was a little disappointed, but you know. Well, it's it's like you said. You know, when you you have a bigger budget, sometimes the 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 higher ups and the powers that be they they kind of lose sight of the important things. You know, and they they try to do a, a, 
too much, you know. Well, because they are in the in the business of making movie. Of course, they're going to try to build this, you know, uh, reality, you know. Sure. So then, of course, I mean, I understand where they're coming from. It's just that, but then, I mean, they should really just pay attention. And this is a fan movie. Sure. <laughs> you know. So. I wonder, like, well, to talk a little bit about the casting. I mean, you know, you were one of two returning actors for for the film, uh, like for as main characters. Anyway. Right. Right. Yeah, Talisa. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, I was wondering. I mean, was what were some of the reasons, you know, or did you know reasons why other people didn't come back, or, or why did yeah. you why did you choose to come back? Oh, I mean, I mean, it's a no brainer to come back. <laughs> sure, so. okay. but, um, but I, I really don't know. Um, I think it was scheduling. Okay, I think, mm, uh, sure. I think that's what it was, or either that they feel those characters aren't important, or the audience might not notice. I don't sure. know. You know, well, but everyone noticed, like, you know, hey, that's not Johnny Cage. Or, right, sure, yeah. <laughs> oh, what happened to Bridget? Or, or what happened to Raiden, you know? Sure. Um, I, I, again, this is studio decision. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I wish I could, like, you know, bring everybody back, you know. Yeah, um, absolutely. I was a little surprised. I have to say, I was a little surprised, and then, but then you just kind of go with it, um, and then try to do the best job you can. Sure, sure. Well, I know that in that when they you know began to talk about a third movie they talked it they had talked about bringing everyone back and and that it being you know kind of a, a complete cast uh again i mean can you can you talk about a little bit of like what happened and why why um, we never got know to what? see that i never movie? really talked to uh larry Kasanov about a third movie i okay. mean Lyndon ashby has and i think um i don't know it's been like 20 years they've been talking about it to bring the movie back and then sure. they're still trying um, I, I I don't know if they're gonna do it. Actually, you know, okay. so it's been it's been twenty years, right? Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, if they're gonna do another more comment, they better do something pretty darn. <laughs> sure, sure. Or or you can just play the the next Shang song. I mean. If well, or I can play the, the hey, what about the Yoda? I can play the Yoda. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, well, you know, in in the last few years, uh, they've they you know have been talking about a reboot, and they did you know several web series. Right. I was wondering if you, had you ever been approached about any of uh, that? I or think, I think I think they did approach me. I mean, I I honestly don't want to do anything aside from the movie you know okay. because it's fine the spinoff is fine the web series is good uh, what they've done to the web series is, is nice it's good for what it is um, so but then I just want to be the movie guy sure you know I mean I mean, no offense to those you know the web series people it's just that right. I just want to do the movies I well, mean I mean, and you have that the ownership of that character. I mean, you know that that is that is specifically you. You know, right? What I mean? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think if as long as I don't sort of um, downgrade what I've done, like downgrade the integrity of, of my character, what I've done for the movie, um, I will always be the chosen one. Sure. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I yeah. mean if, if I don't sell out, you know, I will always be the chosen one. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. Right. There you go. Um, so. You not having been aware of the uh, of the game when you were first approached about the movie, um, have you? No, had, I was not. I was not. So, have you had a chance to play it since? And did you play as yourself or somebody else? <laughs> oh yeah, you know, of course, you know. But you know, I don't. Oh yeah, after that, I played the game, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, my character weren't as interesting as the other character. You know, I mean, I I, I thought Scorpion was really cool. I thought mm-hmm. Cyrex was pretty cool. Smoke is pretty cool. I mean, Liu Kang is like, you know, come on, he's human. Right. <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, it's, it's nice that he can morph into this dragon and all that, but he's human. I mean, I want to play some cyborg. So, yeah. um, so, so reptiles, I mean, they can all turn into different animals and different things. And um, so I, I play a lot of, um, I like Cyrex a lot. I like Scorpion. I like Smoke a lot. So. Sure. Well, you know, like we said, I mean, here we are 20 years later, and there's, I mean, there's a new game coming out this year. I mean, do you keep up with that? You know, I mean, do you still get excited to know that it's still, that the legacy is still there? Oh, yeah, of course, you know, because I think it's, Mortal Kombat is part of my life already, you know. So, I mean, I think um, I'm always excited whenever I see something that, you know, a a new game comes out, a new animation. um, um, You just said, I just hope they will do a good job and and make sure they get they give what the fan wants sure 
once I, this is just an observation. I'm wondering if, if you have any thoughts on it. When I was like 20 or so, I watched the movie when it came out when I was, you know, eight or something. Okay. Then when I was about 20, I got on a big Bruce Lee kick and pun intended. And, um, I, I watched, um, I watched Enter the Dragon. I was like, this is a lot like Mortal Kombat. So it, 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 it is. It in, is. in some ways, um, it's interesting that Liu Kang in the video game, you know, originally is is very similar to Bruce, Bruce Lee in a lot of ways. Oh so yeah, it's, I mean, I, I think there's not one martial arts in the martial artist in the world who doesn't try to emulate Bruce Lee. Sure, right. So and I think it, he is really the huge influence in in all martial artists. Mm-hmm. So I, I just wondered if you've ever thought. You know, since it's so similar to Enter the Dragon, you're kind of like the Bruce Lee of Mortal Kombat. You got to take... It's not only you're playing Liu Kang, but you're kind of playing Bruce Lee in a way. Well, I mean, thank you. Thank you for <laughs> saying that. But, you know, but you know, I mean, I think I will never try to be Bruce Lee. <laughs> sure. sure. Well. Just, just can't. <laughs> um, and then I, I, I don't try to, you know, like, jump around or, or making <laughs> sounds and stuff like that. Uh, but I think the mentality... I try to possess that mentality is that, you know, I'm here to win. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And I have this confidence and I think that's what I love about Bruce Lee is that every time every time he enters the scene, he's just full of confidence. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean he's just full of confidence. Even when he's in like, you know, like intimate danger, he's like confident. I can't take these guys down. So I think that's what it is. Is that, you know, I, I go into the scene trying to be confident. And I know what I'm doing. So, and, and again, trying to project that um, sort of positive attitude. Yeah, it's we we remark to each other that in the movies, Liu Kang is told he's not ready constantly. Right. <laughs> so right. it's like you you know that's kind of what you brought to it was sort of a brashness or like I I can take on shit. I, so. Well, then you know you know I mean that's also like you know when you're ignorant <laughs> so, uh, then when you don't know that you're ignorant of course you have full confidence but then that's like that same goes for like everyone you know we all we should have that confidence i mean if we fail we fail big yeah. deal well great i think that pretty much yeah that pretty much wraps does it, it up robin we we really appreciate you coming on and you know i mean like we, you know, we talked about a little bit. I mean, this is a this is a huge legacy, you know, in in popular culture, and uh, you know, you've played such a huge part in it. And you know, thank you so much for for coming on and chatting oh, with us. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Great, yeah. great. All right, that wraps up our interview with Mr. Robin Shu. I want to thank you guys for listening and Mr. Shu for coming on. As always, you can find us on iTunes and Stitcher. Please rate and review on iTunes. It helps people find us. Helps spread the show around we're at bigger show podcast at twitter and instagram and you can find us at bigger show podcast on youtube see you next time